Let's really lean into what the Holy Spirit might be up to here in our, in our presence, okay? He's alive, he's active, he desires to intersect with the realities of your life, my life, the life of Oasis Church. Um, he, he brings things that, you know, if you think about an oasis in the middle of a desert where things are um, not growing, not flourishing, God is the one th- through the picture of an oasis that brings things to life, Things grow in the oasis. People gather at the oasis. And uh, I believe that's what God has on his heart for for us as a church family. Uh, Individually, then, as we go out, um, we get to be bringers of that kind of life-giving goodness that the Lord has planted in us. So lean in this morning. I I promise to do that. Um, And uh, we'll, we'll be in this together. Let's pray, shall we? Let's pray. Father God, thank you. Thank you for being our, our good father, for being perfect in all of your ways. Thank you that you draw us together this morning. It's April 24th, 2022, and you've got plans, ways that you want to get goodness in us and help us to grow. So um, may, your, may your will, would that will be accomplished here now in Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Well, we're starting a new sermon series. It's on prayer, and uh, it's called the Lord's Prayer, all right, um, because that's what we tend to call the, the prayer that we're going to be focusing on over the next six weeks. Um, this, this prayer that Jesus um, shares first, uh, or I should say, uh, one place that's recorded in Scripture, it's at the, um, the Mount of, uh, all of a sudden I lost it, the Sermon on the Mount. So it's this really great sermon, probably the most famous sermon of all times, one of the best sermons of all times. If you aren't familiar with it, go to Matthew, if you would, uh, chapter 5, and you can experience the whole thing. Today we're going to be talking about the segment that we tend to call the Lord's Prayer. Jesus didn't say, this is the Lord's Prayer. Okay, we call it the Lord's Prayer because it's the Lord who introduced it to us. Jesus uh, shared it there uh, um, on the mount um, as he was speaking to many people and teaching them about the ways of God. And it's also recorded in Luke, um, and, uh, and J- Jesus' disciples were needing help with praying. And so, hey, this is how you can pray. And so if you struggle with what it means to pray, I want to invite you to know that you can be real about that. You know, if somebody said, would you pray for us right now out loud? How would you feel about that? Or maybe even uh, if we took a minute and we just were quiet individually before God and pray. How does that strike you? Is it something that you're comfortable with? Is it something that you do a lot? If you're not, it's okay. We get to bring, again, our real selves to the table this morning and come under the teaching of, um, of Jesus in regard to what it, means, what, it means, what it means to pray and what that's like. Um, I think uh, the first part, we're going we're gonna to break this down in each week. Okay, so each segment of the Lord's Prayer, we're going to break down. So today, we're going to get after this first part, our Father who art in heaven. And uh, it's a very conversational way Jesus introduces this prayer. You know, it's like if you called somebody on the phone, you wouldn't just start talking, right? You would say, hi, Chris, this is Jody. How you doing? Right? This is our Father who art in heaven. All right? Um, it's a conversational way to start a conversation with God. We're invited to be in relationship. A conversation sort of, well, it kind of leads you to think there's a relationship there, right? And we're invited into a relationship. It was a long time in my life before I kind of got that, realized that God wants a relationship with me. That means we talk. If you have good, strong relationships in your life, I'm pretty sure you converse with that person right? You talk with them. You listen also to them. That's an important part of prayer. Uh, But you have this dialogue, our Father, dear Father. Jesus said, if you want to know how to pray, this is how to do it. If you would, turn with me in your Bibles to Matthew chapter 6, where we're going to uh, see this really great prayer. So Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John. Matthew's the first gospel, the first book in the New Testament. And we're going to Matthew chapter 6, for, uh, so if you ever wonder, like, where is the Lord's Prayer found in the Bible? You can go one place to Matthew chapter 6. All right, so Matthew chapter 6, and um, we're going to pick up right uh, on verse 9. Jesus said, pray then like this. 
Let's, let's listen to that whole prayer. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. I can't wait to talk about that next week, actually. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our debts or our sins or our trespasses. Maybe you're familiar with that version. As we also for, <laughs> have forgiven our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. All right. There's more to the Lord's Prayer. And in the coming weeks, we're going to talk about that. But this is what is recorded in Matthew chapter 6. Our Father in heaven. So you want to know how to pray? What's it mean to pray? It means to be in conversation with God. Couldn't be more clear than Jesus says, when you start, say our Father. Now, what's the significance of our Father? It's kind of a big deal. We get kind of comfortable with it. Oh, yeah, of course, the Lord's Prayer. Our Father who art in heaven, right? We don't even think about it. I don't sometimes. I don't think about those first few words. But what's being communicated, one, about Jesus, two, about God the Father. There's stuff here. Let's mine for it. So Jesus establishes a relationship, and we know that he calls on God the Father. So there's a son-father relationship. We hear that. We talk about that. Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, the Trinity. But he is also saying to his disciples, this is how you should pray too. He is also your father. That's a really, really big deal. Way back in Exodus, the very first time, that concept of um, Israel, the, the, the Hebrew people being God's children, comes in Exodus when Moses is supposed to go and he's supposed to talk to Pharaoh because God's people are enslaved in Egypt. We've been talking about this actually over the last couple of weeks as we've been thinking even about the journey of Jesus to the cross with the Passover. And so uh, before that, as Moses is supposed to go talk to Pharaoh, he's supposed to, actually, let's go to it. Exodus chapter 4. I'll get you turning all over the place if you have your Bibles with you or your apps. That's really, really slick. Exodus chapter 4, verses 22 and 23. God's giving Moses instructions on what to say when he goes to Pharaoh. And he's supposed to say this about Israel. Thus says the Lord, Israel, God's people, the Hebrew people, Israel, (laughs) somebody's got their audio on the Bible, I love that, that's great. (laughs) Chapter 4, that very dramatic voice. Okay, Uh, verse 22, uh, then you should say to Pharaoh, God says, thus says the Lord, Israel is my firstborn son, and I say to you, let my son go that he may serve me. An established relationship of father and son is first named in uh, the Hebrew scriptures in the Old Testament here in Exodus. So God's people and, and Jesus' disciples would have likely known that. Okay, for again, for years and years, they've been celebrating the Passover. They've been celebrating and retelling this story about how God saved people from slavery, walked them into freedom. They would have known that the identity of God's people was one of a father and son. Okay? So when Jesus says, pray like this, our Father, he's tying back to the freedom that was won on God's behalf for the people. Okay, Super cool. And I don't want us to miss it. And this is something I've been learning this week. We, we are tied to that father-son, that child-father relationship. And that's really important when we think about our Father, when we think about who God is, our Father in heaven, and his relationship. It also puts us in a brother-like sibling relationship with Jesus. Have you thought of that? If we're all calling him our Father, Jesus is like our brother. Scripture talks about that as well. Okay, so we get to be in the royal family, praise the Lord, huh? I don't know if you've thought about your identity lately like that. If you look in the mirror and you think, man, that's royalty looking back at me. That's what God says about you. It's his kingdom, right? He's the Father, And Jesus says, hey, when you pray, pray like this. Our Father. So there's a lot more happening here than just two words. Jesus uses the word Father a lot. Actually, in the New Testament, the word Father is used 366 times. I think that's kind of cool. A couple extra for every day of the year. Yes? He's our Father. That relationship is clearly established between Jesus and his heavenly Father. Um, In the small catechism, Martin Luther uh, and we do have a Lutheran foundation. We're an LCMC church. Uh, he, uh, Martin Luther created something called the small catechism. 
It was intended for parents to use uh, to, uh, to teach their children about the like, core Christian stuff, okay? And um, like the Lord's Prayer is one of the things that's in the small catechism. And Martin Luther wants to sort of help parents because at that time, um, there was a lot of need for education around who God is and, and like the Ten Commandments is in here, the Lord's Prayer is in here, and it's like explained a little bit. And there's other parts, the Apostles' Creed. In um, the small catechism, this is what Luther writes about this introduction, our Father who art in heaven. He says this. Uh, well, this is the English translation. Here God encourages us, sorry, here God encourages us to believe that he is truly our Father and we are his children. We therefore are to pray to him with complete confidence just as children speak to their heavenly father. Isn't that beautiful? In a loving, trusting, father-child relationship, you know, we're to pray to him with complete confidence, just as children speak to their loving father. Now, does that mean that we get everything we ask for? I wish. God isn't a genie in a bottle. It's not how it works. Um, I want to tell you the story that I heard from a youth director many years ago. It really, really struck me. His name was Jim. He had two twin, uh, twin uh, sons, I think. It's been a little while now. We'll go with that, but I think that's right. And they're two years old, and they uh, lived in a house that had the deck on the second story. I'm kind of picturing like a split-level home. And there was this deck and a long staircase that led down to the yard, Okay. And there was a gate at the top of the stairs in order to protect these little ones, right, from toddling off and falling down this long staircase. Well, one day he took a phone call. He was on the phone um, while they were out on the deck. And um, all of a sudden he looks over and he realizes the gate is open. And one of his sons is toddling at the top of the stairs. So, of course, of course, like a good dad, he runs over and he snatches up his child. The deal is that little one was on a mission. He wanted to go down there, right? And so uh, Jim tells the story that his little toddler starts like throwing a tantrum, right? I mean, almost like pounding on his shoulder as he's picking him up because he had in mind a, a, a something, right? And his dad, in his loving kindness, knew what was best for his son. And so he snatches him up so that he's safe, that he's protected, um, that he uh, is well. Gosh, this sort of speaks to me. I don't know if you've prayed any prayers lately that you thought, uh, I kind of I kind of know how this is supposed to go, God. <laughs> you know? And uh, this ain't it. Uh, the gate was open. I was on my way. And wait, you interrupted my plans, God. A good father would do that, right, for his child. A good father would know best. They should make a show about that in like the 40s. Father knows that. Was that the 40s? Way earlier? Later? I don't know. I'll tell you what. 60s? Thank you. Thank you. Gosh, I mean, it's black and white. To me, it feels so much farther away than 60s. Okay, okay. I'll keep going. The liability on ex extroverts? <laughs> okay. Um, father, he knows best. Okay. Well, there might be some readjustments we need to make in regard to our understanding of God the Father, who cares desperately for us, so much so that he sent his one and only son to pay the penalty for our sin, that we don't have to, that it's not hanging over our heads, the perfect sacrifice in our place. The nails and the blood, for what? For our freedom, to win our freedom. Um, there is a really cool passage where Jesus talks about this father relationship. It's in Luke chapter 11. And uh, I love this passage. So let's turn there if you have your Bibles with you. Luke chapter 11. It's again in the New Testament. Luke chapter 11. We should have the audio Bible version read it to us, I think. Don't you think? Hello. All right. Luke uh, chapter 11, verses 11 uh, through 13. Here we go. And actually, the Lord's Prayer is recorded in this section um, of Luke as well, so it's kind of, kind of interesting. Okay, Luke 11, 11 through 13. Here we go. What father among you, if his son asks for a fish, will instead of a fish give him a serpent? Or if he asks for an egg, 
will give him a scorpion. If you then, who are evil, know how to give good gifts to your children, how much more will the Heavenly Father give the Holy Spirit to those who ask him? We're invited to ask the Holy Spirit to, uh, to be um, uh, uh, in our lives, okay? I want to show you this. Just think about this a minute. And I, I just really don't want us to miss some of these really powerful pictures that are um, in Scripture. So I'm going to go back to the pictures, and I'm having a hard time with that. Sorry, Tara. Okay, thank you. Let's go with that one. So who, what father, if their child asks for a fish, instead gives them this? Oh, that's a fish. That's another fish. Here's another fish picture, actually. It's, that's what, this is more the kid version, isn't it? The fish sticks. Okay. Who, who, what dad would then instead give them this next thing? A serpent. Nah, that's not a dad, like loving dad kind of thing. All right. The next picture Jesus paints is what, what dad, if their child asked for an, I think it's an egg, right? Is that what's next? All right. Instead would give them this, a scorpion. No. That's not a loving father. A loving father um, gives good gifts. So Jesus says, well, like you, you guys give good gifts to your kids, right? It was Christmas not that long ago. How much more will your heavenly father give you good gifts? Let's talk about that relationship. I'm going to have Brian and Isetta. They're going to illustrate something for us here in a moment um, about this father-daughter relationship. Does that sound okay? Are you guys up for it? Okay, come on up. So I, uh, I asked Brian and Izetta to help us with something. And I'm guessing this is something that you guys do just for fun every once in a while as a dad and daughter, okay? Let's see this, how this goes. Show us, what is your, what's your dad do sometimes? Does he sometimes throw you up in the air? Let's see it. Let's see it. Let's go. She's like, on this stage too? All right. Okay, let's see. Whoa! I said, are you afraid when your dad does that? No, you're not afraid? Not at all, huh? Why not, I wonder? Because you know your dad, right? You know he's strong, that, that he's not putting you in danger. This is fun, right? Did you see her face as she got thrown up in the air? It's fun stuff to do that. Well, how about one more? You want to do, oh, and you like to twirl. Actually, that happens a lot in worship, and I just love that, to see Brian and Izetta, and sometimes Allie and Izetta dancing around. Oh, oh, what? That's a lot of trust right in there. Thank you so much. Can we say thank you to them for helping us out? Thanks, you've given us a good picture. All right, thank you, thank you. That's a, that's a cool picture, isn't it, of God, of God the Father, who when we trust him, well, actually, even when we don't, is trustworthy, is strong enough. What is it the barrier? What is it the burden that you're carrying that you think, I don't know if I can hand this over. He can handle it. He's a good father. Now, um, I want to name that there are actually a lot of churches who have kind of given up on talking about who God the Father is even sometimes changing the name of God the Father in Scripture. And one of the big reasons for that is because they name that there are people who have issues with their earthly father. And I want to name that. Hey, we all have earthly fathers. None of them are perfect. And if you are one who has some wounds, some dad wounds in your heart in your life, it's okay to name that, especially as we talk about who God is as God our Father. Because if we don't, we start putting attributes of our flawed earthly fathers on God. And that's messed up. That's not an accurate picture of who God is. Okay? Um, by the way, we should be praying for our dads. All right? And, um, but that's for another time. So uh, think, about it, think about it this way. And this is why I think it's so important for us to talk about God the Father. Especially for people who have heart issues with their earthly father. Because our heavenly father is perfect. <laughs> He's the picture of what we need in our heavenly father. Okay, And so it's okay to name pain points. But notice and acknowledge that God our heavenly father is perfect. 
And if your earthly father has not been able to provide what you need, know that your heavenly father has it in spades. Okay? If there's been lack of trust, hurtful words, um, even walking away, that's, that's not God. He doesn't do that. As our perfect heavenly father, he is with us. He promises to love us. And I hope, I mean, I think about my dad. I have, there's like tons of attributes of my dad that I am so thankful for. He resembles God in those ways. But where there's brokenness, know that our perfectly heaven, heavenly father desires a relationship with you. So much so that we run to him and say, hey, dad. And that's kind of what Jesus was introducing to his disciples. Hey, dad, let's talk. Hey, dad, your name is great. Your name is you're in heaven, you're over all things, you're greater than anything I could comprehend, and yet you invite me to be in a personal relationship with you, our Father. My, my encouragement to you this week is to find at least one time a day, put a prompt somewhere if you need to, an alarm on your phone, post it on your mirror, wherever, and pray a Our Father kind of prayer. Start your prayer, Our Father. Hey, Dad. Hey, Heavenly Father, start a prayer like that and see what comes, you know? Bring whatever it is before him. Put your trust in him like we saw Isetta put her trust in her dad. Maybe even just a small step. Thank him for the ways that he's shown up as a good father, okay? Find some ways this week to pray that Our Father prayer because he loves you. Can I tell you this? I want to look you all in the eye like at the same time I can't. God can he loves you. He wants to mend the parts of your heart that are broken. He wants to redefine what needs to be redefined in regard to fatherhood. He wants to show you that he's trustworthy. He wants you to run to him. God, can you tie my shoe? I can't get it. I need help. Even the little things. I mean, I know most of us here can tie shoes. I, I don't have. Anyway, moving on. So we can come to him with anything we need. And he is arms open wide. There's a great story in Luke 15. You can read about it this week if you don't believe me. Where the father is shown in such a way that he runs to his son who has absolutely sold out. Walked away, said, You're, you know, I'd rather you be dead than alive. That's the son's take. He walks and he walks away. But when he realizes that things in his father's house are better than what he's doing right now, he turns around and he doesn't even make it home before God the Father is running to him, which culturally that was really not a respectful way. And the father runs, runs to him, throws his arms around him, kisses him on the cheek, gets a robe. And next week, by the way, we have confirmation here uh, at Oasis Church, our very first. And it's such a beautiful picture of a robe that's placed on... <laughs> On this son, the first robe in Luke 15 that shows you are back. You are clothed in, in purity because of what the father has done and on, on the behalf of the son. And uh, we can just live into that. So let's pray some Our Father prayers this week, shall we? And see what God does in our hearts. All right, let's pray. Our Father, uh, thank you. Thank you that you're trustworthy. Thank you that you're dependable. Thank you, Father, that you are uh, consistent. Thank you, God, that you are, you, you look on us with love. <laughs> Thank you, Father, that you are gracious. Lead us to understand your Father heart for us all the more. In the name of Jesus, we pray. Amen. Amen.